for this year. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The reason I'm bringing that one in, I know you know that you do good work and that God created you to work for him. But sometimes we think that it's limited to people who have particular ability set. And actually it didn't say some people were created. It, it said we, so that means it's inclusive. It's all of us. So um, They also have the ability to serve the Lord and finding their strengths and helping them plug in where they can do that is very important. So let's have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we have together, and we thank you for this ministry, Lord. We pray that you will guide us and lead us to do what you would have us to do to help these families and these individuals grow closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So our mission is basically to show the love of Christ to our families, and we're calling them VIPs, which is valued, important people. And they are a part of the body of Christ, just as all of us are also once you become a Christian, uh, then you're in the body of Christ. And uh, so we could be talking about children, but we could also be talking about adults. So sometimes I will say kids or children, or I might say VIPs, but it doesn't matter the age. Um, it's any of them that, and it's, they could have a physical condition like Sandra who, walks around with a limp, or they could have cognitive or developmental or hidden disabilities where you might not see the disability, but there's something there that impedes their being able to do the things that they would like to do maybe. Or they could be medical or chronic illnesses. Some illnesses kind of keep you confined. My husband's very confined now because of dementia. And so if you saw him until he started talking to you, it could be hidden. Um, but a disability is an impairment that limits one of life's activities. So that's why we always say there's people with disabilities and people who are temporarily able, but they're gonna have a disability sooner or later. And it could be caused from birth or lots of other causes. It could be from childhood or it could be that you're uh, an adult and you've had an accident or an illness or just the aging process, but there are lots of things that could cause an impairment. And that's all we're gonna talk about, about disabilities. If you have any questions about any particular disability, we can address those at the end. But buddies is what we're talking about today, and that's the friends of our VIPs. And you're there to help them to whatever kind of help they might need. And I would always say you would wanna start with asking. I found out on my mission trip really quick how it feels to be old, because they wanted to help me do everything, and Sometimes my bag and myself didn't end up at the same place because somebody wanted to grab it and help me. And not only did it have all the team's money in it, it also had my passport. And then I was sweating and worried till we got reconnected to my bag because somebody took it while I was trying to do a step or something. And off it went to the trunk of a car and then they took us in a different one. So sometimes people help you more than you want to help. And uh, I really, Wendy could tell you this because she worked with me for years, have told, told my assistants when I was training them, I have a world of patience, but one thing I'm very impatient about is doing for someone something they can do for themselves. So let them do it. It, it will take them longer, but they're not gonna learn by you doing it. And so it's better if they do it themselves. So that's kind of my pet peeve there. We won't everyone to feel welcome in our church. And I think we can pretty well just talk about Mount Mariah, even though she's not. <laughs> These two are uh, Cornersville First Baptist, but we claim them anyway. Bill, church. <laughs> <laughs> I know your pastor, so. <laughs> but a safe, friendly, caring environment is what we're looking for. And sometimes we have to do some planning for it to stay safe for all our individuals. And inclusion is why we need buddies. And some people think food inclusion's a place, like all the five-year-olds go in that room, and you, you go there too if you're included. And that, it can be a place, but inclusion itself is not a place. It's fitting the need. It's including them with non-disabled or typically developing peers, 
but in a way that fits what they can do. So if they can fit in and they don't need any other supports other than natural supports, which would be the teachers that are in there, that would have to help all the students with some points, then it's, that's certainly where they belong, is to be there. But it's not one size fits all. Some need are fine with just the regular classroom and no extra support other than what that teacher would give any student in there. But some need more support than that, um, and that's where buddies would come in. In a regular classroom, everyone at some point might need redirected. You might have an activity that just got out of control and you've got to calm everybody back down or something, or they didn't understand the directions and they're off doing something totally different than what you'd planned. So those incidents, that's where the natural support comes in. That's where they would do just what everyone else was doing. Other than they might need a break, and you have a, a signal that they let you know when they kind of had all they can handle and they need a break. Uh, she could tell you her son needs to get up and pace. And so his teachers always knew that and they had a little bit of space in the room where he knew he could, and he was still a part of it, still listening, but he was moving. And so if they need just a little something like that, that can be accommodated too, a little extra space, a, a way to let you know that they need a break. But sometimes they, they do need a support. If you know that you have a student that needs support, you can always put an extra teacher in that class. And they're there to help everyone. And, but they also know that uh, they're going to keep a close eye on, on the VIP. Also, visual schedules, visual supports help a whole lot so they know what's going on. I went in as a buddy with a little guy uh, to Awanas. And this was what we used. I kept it handy, plus I had him a little pencil box so he had his own crayons and scissors and stuff and something to fidget with if he needed to. But I kept this. It could be the student keeps it, but a lot of the little ones want to chew on it or lose it or stretch it like crazy, so I kept it to show him, you know, um, right now you're doing the, you're going to, they're doing the Bible study and then they're going to get us a snack or whatever was next in the schedule so he could see. And then on the back, I could give him check marks, and I've learned a cram works really good because markers, they're liable to get it from you, mark on the wall, mark on their clothes, mark on the chairs, or they might throw them. You can throw a crayon too, but it's not too unsafe. And these wipe off pretty good with your finger. It takes a little bit more effort, but it just, so he had five chances, and at the end, he knew he got Skittles, but he had to get his five check marks to get his skittles and that was right there I always had it and if he didn't show up I didn't need it it just stayed in my bag but if he showed up on my wrist it went and there I went to help him you know if he needed that help uh, I've seen them done on lanyards and if you do those uh, be sure you have one that breaks away if they start to pull on you you don't want it to choke you so be sure you get one that will break away if uh, they're doing it. You have those cards on your table that, that I used for him just to sh kind of show you what it looks like. It had a first, you're going to do this, and then you're going to do that, and then you would put whatever pictures went there. And on the back, it's what they were working for and um, what they had to do to get it. So he had to stay quiet, and he got his Skittles. This one says Play-Doh, but he, he wanted Skittles. But. So those are just some of the things that could be done without extra people in there or, or um, that extra one person. I could help anyone in the room, but I was there to make sure it went well for him as well. And so then you might be fully supported in that classroom. You're still going in there because socially you need to be with typically developing peers. You're not going to learn typically developing behaviors <laughs> if you're not around typically developing peers. So. Um, Again, this time the buddy would stay closer to that person. So they might actually sit right with them the whole time uh, and give them some one-on-one -on -one attention and assistance. Um, a lot of behaviors go away when you have attention. And if you have somebody's undivided attention, then that pretty well takes care of a lot of behavior problems, especially if the cause was attention, if you're acting out so you can get attention and you have somebody's undivided attention, then that pretty well takes care of that. And they would remind them of what was coming next in the schedule, giving them their rewards and check marks, and uh, 
just kind of keeping them calm. Um, some of them can't self-regulate enough to calm back down. If something's exciting happening and everybody else calms back down and goes on with something else, like everybody was playing ball and get, having a great time and then you're going to tell the Bible story, mm -hmm. they're not going to always calm right back down on their own. That self-regulation component may not be strong for them and they're going to need reminders. Now we're going to be quiet and we're going to do this and then we'll get the ball back again or something. And if you noticed, I seldom put a fidget out that's a ball because balls are for throwing and most teachers don't want you throwing things while you're in class. So um, remember that when you're choosing things to fidget on it. Balls, kids are going to throw balls. So that's not always the best choice. So they also need to know what is coming next and re what would reinforce them. Like the Skittles, like the little boy I talked about, he knew that was an approved stack by his mother and he knew he could get it at the end if he had his check marks. Mm -hmm. talk about the schedule. Yeah, go ahead. Um, in my class, we have a schedule like this. It says, today we are. Now, you can do Velcro. I like Velcro because I can just pull and make it the way I want it. This is just an example. So I have this hanging up. And so when they walk in, they know, okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have our welcome. We're going to have our prayer. And then we go around the room and every student tells me a good thing that happened this week and a bad thing that happens that week. That sort of helps me gauge where they're at so I can know, okay, he needs a little more support or they had a good week, they're going to be okay, they're going to settle in. And then we Bible lesson, like we were doing Fruits of the Spirits. Um, the third thing is the Fruit of the Spirit's Craft, or Fruit of the Spirit's Basket. And I know there might be some in my class that will need that extra support, so I make sure I have who I need and what I need to help them with that. Um, and then for my kiddos that can't sit still, my kinesthetic learners, I always do a game. And like find the fruit of spirits where you can hide like fruits around your room and they find that fruit of the spirit and they read it and they tell you. Um, the one thing in my room is I don't care if they stand up as long as they're standing up and paying attention. If they're standing up at their table and they're doing the work and paying attention to what I'm asking them to do, I'm okay with that as long as they're not distracting. Uh, then we have our prayer wall cards and requests. We had a prayer wall where if they didn't want us to tell their request out loud, they can write it on the prayer wall card and hang it on our prayer wall. And then we would have people come in from the church and take those prayer cards off the wall and they'll pray over that request all week long. And then our sixth thing we would do is quiet and prayer time. That helps them settle back down. They can pray about things that they need to pray about before we go into the sanctuary. I believe it is also their classroom, so they need to help clean up before we dismiss because it's our classroom. They need to feel a little bit of ownership of that classroom. And if they help clean up, it gives them that little bit of ownership and then we dismiss. There are often children who really can't handle a whole class period. And, but you could look at their strengths and say, well, you know, they're really good at music time. And so like, if your class is going to do music, they come in for the music activity and then they have an alternate activity later. And that's where my room would come in if it was Sunday morning uh, that they could come into my room to do their lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's just, a, it's, it's inclusion, but it's partial. We, we want them to be successful and we also do not want them to keep others from learning because inclusion's not working unless it's working for everyone. And sometimes even schools get this wrong. They have a right to be there, and so they've got to be there no matter what's going on. And so they're throwing fits and screaming, and no one is learning. That's not, that's not inclusion. That's a chaotic mess. So uh, inclusion is a success when everyone is safe, feels safe and comfortable, and everyone can learn. And so then it gets to more limited inclusion. And that's where somebody with a more severe disability. And my daughter has slowly fallen into that category. She's been through the whole um, gamut of being able to be fully included as a kindergartner on, on down to just partially by junior high. And, but her illnesses have gotten worse. She's had more surgeries. She's 
got severe sleep apnea and about half the time she'd rather be asleep because she hadn't slept well the night before. And so it, it's just really pushing her to go to an, an adult setting and, and participate as an adult now. So that's where a private session, a private place can come in where she can know what's going on in there and rest if she needs to rest or do the activity if she wants to do the activity. And because of that, for Sunday morning, her schedule, which I hardly ever have to use anymore, and I think as I was looking at it again, I realized why she sleeps in church so much. <laughs> but I had made her one where Sunday school just had Sunday school. I wrote connect because that's the new word here. <laughs> <laughs> My old version was Sunday school. And but then we, we drive around to, so she doesn't have to go up the steps. So uh, then we go up to church and they have the singing up there and they have the prayer. And I can point back at prayer again if she when they pray another time because they do pray more than once but I only put it on there once and they take up the offering and then there's the sermon now the rest of these is because I want to introduce her to the plan of salvation so I'm telling her the sermon's going to be from the Bible it's going to talk about Jesus Jesus loves us and died on the cross for us Jesus wants us to love other people so when I talk to her about what's going to happen at church those are on there for me to make it more uh, that it always has bathroom off to the side, so she, she, she does know how to sign restroom, but sometimes she'll point to the picture, and I'm like, oh, she's got to go. Or sensory, hers are, well, this, this is one of her bags. She likes this, but she likes things that have the little things you can feel, spiky things, mm -hmm. and she can just sit and do something like that, and that's not too distracting until she decides to throw it, but even then it doesn't somebody and eventually Mar will throw if you've been around her long you know that <laughs> it is communication and that's we say that at some point but she can also opt to leave and that's hard for me because I never want to leave but, <laughs> but uh, she can tell me you know I need to calm down and then I know we got to get out of here mm -hmm. on the back is what I'm telling her she's trying to do first she's gonna have quiet feet quiet hands listen and be quiet so I thought this is why she sleeps <laughs> everything was just be quiet <laughs> so I might as well go to sleep and then we she knows when we leave church we go eat lunch so she, that's her motivation is like, I'm gonna get lunch if I stay quiet hey I sleep and I got it made <laughs> well I looked at that I thought I set her up for that didn't I so you have to kind of watch those things too but that's that's a child who is still included because I want her to come to meals I want her to go to the worship service but she has always needs, even at STARS, a one-on-one, -on -one, somebody sitting right next to her and helping her motivate and get through whatever is going on. So that's what inclusion's about. Do you need questions about how it could be different for different children? It's not all the same. And if everybody's treating everybody the same, then they're not individualizing it to the needs. Because everyone has gifts, like we talked about, and are part of the body of Christ, and we need to look at their strengths, but also at their need. And start with their strengths. Families hear about their needs and know them too. And you can tell me that Mar throws stuff. It's not news to me. But if you told me you like the way Mar smiled, you've just given her a compliment and made her mama feel really good. So be sure that you're, as a church, making them feel like they are a part of it and comfortable. And most, I'm definitely preaching to the choir y'all are all calling her by name and being friendly to her when she comes uh, and anyone else that wants to speak up about her child or her child or anybody that you work with we'd be glad to so input at any time so during church because Allie is a performer um so when the singing starts Allie wants to sing but Allie also wants to do all her dances and I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh, no. Dancing. Please encourage. I, I okay. want to see some dancing. Yeah. Yeah. No, trust me, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> she, can really she can't sing without dancing. No, she can't. Oh, she can't. No, she can't. She, and so does we. <laughs> she can't. They know. She's all about it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Just let her. I will tell you where I had Skittles for him. All you got to do is tell her you do these things and you have a dance party. Yeah. This girl is on it. She yeah. will do one, two, three, four, five things to get that dance party yeah, at will. the end. <laughs> I don't. Her dancing and it's no problem for me. Yeah. But other people around, I'm like. Let me know their names. 
<laughs> no, for sure, we want to educate people. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, need, I want that girl singing and dancing. Oh, well. Please. <laughs> just look out. You'll see okay. her. She'll be just. Please. Oh. Okay. We sit behind you and we have an answer too. So yes. Okay. Yeah. I saw one of the ladies just doing this all through it. And I thought, I know I sway a little too, but I'm like, mm, she really likes to move, doesn't she? Yeah. So it's. Some of us just can't be still when the music's playing. Yep. <laughs> if she auditions well, she can move up to the back. Oh, <laughs> yes, she would. She's not shy. Which goes into my next slide about that building relationships. The family needs to feel welcomed and that their special needs person is loved and accepted. They can't stay without that because that's their first priority. And so saying naming them by name. If you haven't met Allie, please meet Allie. She's wonderful. And make an eye contact with them. And um, talking to them or talking to the parent, you know, don't go up and ask Michelle what, what's her disability. She would, but that's not, you know. Instead, you can ask her something like, uh, tell me something wonderful about Michelle. She, I mean, not Michelle, but she's Allie. wonderful too. But tell me something <laughs> wonderful about Allie. And she would, she, there's a lot wonderful about her, and she might tell you where her YouTube channel is so you can yes. see some really <laughs> Allie in action. <laughs> she likes to do her video. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, she asked Allie about her favorite things. Um, Pastor Matt did that with the stars the other day. They enjoyed talking to him, but they were talking about their favorite foods, what they like to do in activities. You know, it just makes you comfortable. And, uh, yeah, there's, the needs have to be addressed at some time, but not in front of everybody. <laughs> so our focus is on making them feel like they're a part of it and keeping them in mind and knowing that they have talents as well. And it kind of goes on, um, on number three now. The meeting them, and it's kind of the same thing. Some of them aren't going to be that way. They're going to be shy, but so are some of us. We have introverts and extroverts, and uh, some are very sensitive to um, lights. So in a bright light room, they're not going to be quite as good. Some are very sensitive to touch. I've worked with this lady for a long time, and I would love to hug her for all she does for me, <laughs> but I'm not about to give her a hug without asking her because that's not something she really enjoys. Nope. <laughs> and she might tolerate me hugging her, but I've <laughs> learned she doesn't want my hug. So, you know, and some of them are that way too. You're just going to have to let them warm up to you, and that's we. And general questions, you know, have you had a good day so far? That kind of thing. Just being friendly and encouraging to them. And now back to the rules. A classroom needs rules, and I didn't know if everyone was classroom teachers or not, so I didn't set these out, but there's enough to go around. This is from a school, and it's rules, uh, rules for rules. <laughs> Even making rules who needs rules. Um, it's actually from Triad, if you don't know what that is. It's uh, the Tennessee um, resource for autism and they do lots of materials about autism and you know they, well that only applies to autistic children no it doesn't it can be used for anyone it's just good practices rules need to be simple and just a few you don't want to have more than three to five rules and they need to be posted and discussed and some students don't come regularly so you won't don't want to discuss them at the first of the year and then never discuss them again because everybody in the class may know them and follow them but a new person might not or a person who doesn't attend regularly or has short-term memory problems might not remember them so every now and then let's say let's go, let's go over our rules before we start again and just read them again it's not gonna hurt anyone we all need to read the bible it's our book of rules right we mean, don't get there pastor yeah i know it's more than rules but <laughs> but you know you do want to know what the expectations are and so keeping those simple and discussing what that means and what that looks like just will help everybody be on the same page as to what the expectations are and that also goes for routines 
if you will establish the schedule, what happens, when, where, and how, then they know what comes next. That creates a lot of comfort. Now, it also causes some problems when the schedule changes. Yep. So just know that ahead of time, well, today we're going to do something a little different. Want them, like, let their parent know ahead of time if possible. Not, if not, maybe you found out when you got to church, oh, we're all going to do this first. Say, tell everybody in the beginning and put something on your schedule. Now, when I was showing you Mara's, she does not want to take these off and move them. Some people do so they can see that they're all gone and Velcro works for it. Good for that. When we were first training with it, she got the check mark for it. You know, but we just now, I just point at something when I need to. So if she look getting antsy, I'm like, you know, it's almost time for this. Or it's almost time where we shake hands and go, you know. So, but some of them do need them where they can put, peel it off like Velcro or magnets and it's all done. So they can see, whoo, most of the schedule's gone now. I only got these two things left to do. That can help them stay calm. But you can also cover up a picture or take it off and put... Uh, oops, uh, special, whatever you want to call it, uh, kind of day where something's, something new is different that day. You can make a sign up that everybody knows, hey, there's a, there's a new and incredible thing happening today. And then you can put that on the, there in its place. So that kind of will let them know if something is uh, going to be different. Um, the oops is a big thing, like in my household with Nick. During the week, he knows he's got to be up at this time. He's leaving for work at this time. He'll be home at this time. So if something different happens in our household, we have to prep him for that. And I think Mama can attest, you don't tell the child that we're eating at 2 o'clock and then don't eat at 2 o'clock or we will have a full-fledged come apart. And don't move the furniture around either. No. <laughs> I made that mistake. Yeah, without preparing him. Without for, telling him. Yeah. So that oops is a big deal to a lot of the kiddos. So if you are doing something different, make sure they know and prepare them for it. And it can be on something little, it can be on a piece of paper, it can be a whole poster, whatever works. A folder with a schedule in it is something they can carry and carry in a Bible. It can be smaller so it fits right in their Bible, whatever it takes to, to work for them. Um, this is one about routines that I used in the classroom because you think everybody knows how to blow their nose, but sometimes people need it worked out step by step. Mm -hmm. you, first you get the Kleenex and instead of your sleeve, yeah. <laughs> and then you blow your nose and then you wipe it really good and you put it in the trash can. And then you need to wash your hands, so all that was on there step by step, and I kept that on the Kleenex box so they could see this is how we do that. So if you have something that they're struggling with, you can always do a step-by-step. -step. In my bathroom was step-by-step -step brush your teeth at school, was step-by-step -step going to the restroom and flushing, and all that was worked out in pictures. The words were there for the readers, but the pictures were there for the non-readers. And uh, like, um, if you don't want to move stuff back and forth and you do different things on different day, but it's routine, you could have your Monday schedule and your Tuesday schedule or whatever and have the different things on it. This is um, from the day program called STARS and you're all invited anytime you have any time on a Monday or Wednesday to come down and join us for a little while. Uh, but usually we do a game on a Monday and we do our shopping, so that's one thing that's on there different. People have donated some things to us and I want them to learn about money, so we have a bank of money and they each start out with the same amount and some have more money than others because they don't buy anything and some buy everything the store <laughs> offers. <laughs> <laughs> so, or if you ever have items you think, maybe they want this down there for their little store. So they're, but we set prices on it and they have to figure out how much change they'll get and all that kind of stuff too. So it's a vocational skill as well as you get something good like what was those things called that you got the other day? Crunch and Munch. Crunch and Munch was in the store. He was happy about that. Okay, she's going to talk a little bit about rules. Y'all get to participate. Who wants to come up and get one? Just come on. Yeah, your mama just pass them out. Here, pass them out. And then I need somebody to read our rules. These are my three basic rules that I have 
when I had a Sunday school, these were my three basic rules with the scriptures that go with it. Want me to read them? You can. All right. Rule number one, you do your best. Colossians 3.23, work willingly and whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Rule number two, be respectful. Matthew 7.12, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. And rule three, be kind. Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as Christ forgave you. All right. So... In my school classroom, we use pictures. So the ones that have pictures, read out your okay, calm body. Mm -hmm. So which rule would you think that would go with and why? And now some of them can go more than with one. Do your best. Yeah, you have to have a calm body to do your best, but it also can be respectful. Mm -hmm. uh, you want your body calm so you can listen and learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Who has the next one? Calm feet, why? Okay, so that would be respectful. Mm-hmm. Because we need calm feet. We don't want to be kicking or hurting anybody. Um, walking feet. Walking feet. That's that's a big one for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, be respectful. Mm-hmm. We don't want them running around the sanctuary or whatnot. Have nice hands. Nice hands. That would be respectful and nice. Mm-hmm. Because you know nobody likes to get hit, and we need to have kind hands to be nice. Oh, my turn. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. Okay. So that, that could be respectful and being kind. And it can be do your best. Yes. I forgot one of my best. I've got one that says keep trying. Because when you keep trying, you are putting forth your best effort. I forgot that one. <laughs> I've got kind words. Be kind. Mm -hmm. uh, words matter. Um, we're in the process of teaching our kids at school that all words matter, so we really need to watch how we say it and what we say. Caring heart. Caring heart. I think it would go under all three. Yes. You can do your best to be caring. You can mm -hmm. ever be respectful. Yeah, all three. Yep, I agree. Um, again, a caring heart, we want the kids to realize that they, they need to love everybody and that we want to love on them. Um, I like pictures because it helps the kids, you know, okay, caring heart. It has a picture of the heart, and it's showing that it's caring. So I always make sure I have pictures to go with my rules. Um, and you can't, sometimes you can't be in general. You have to tell them what being kind is, what being respectful is, and how you do your best. Just make sure you put it to their level according to each group. Yes, when you're saying three or five rules and respect is a rule, then you're going to have to spend some time on what is respect, what does respect look like. We've spent a week on kindness and what kindness was at, mm -hmm. at STARS because we're going through the fruit of the spirits as well. And so um, they don't all auto automatically know because I kept hearing, be nice. That was what they saw for kindness. And okay, then what's be nice you know so <laughs> you have to kind of break it down and with rules and and procedures we've talked about the schedules we've talked about written rules posted everyone could benefit from the schedule to know what's coming but they so it can be a full-size schedule or it can be the little ones that we talked about either way and then the first them was what I gave you sometimes they just need to know I don't like what we're doing right now but that's a not an it's not my preferred activity. Sitting and listening to Sandra lecture is not fun. But next we get cookies and juice. Now that I do like, so. You know, <laughs> you know, so the first then works for a lot of people. Now and going back to what she said about, um, about explaining, not, not everybody uses the same words for certain things. Mm -hmm. um, example, and Alex was explaining, I was like, mm. And I had no idea where she heard that word, but she actually had heard it at school. Um, but I called somebody a dummy in traffic, Nashville traffic. And um, she said, you're not supposed to say that. And I said, no, ma'am, I'm not. And you're right. And But if he would have kept, you know. <laughs> I was trying to make my point. But she said, no, that is inappropriate. Mm -hmm. A word I should have never <laughs> yep. said. A word we do not go around saying inappropriate. We go, we say, no, ma'am, that's not nice. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. Yes, that's good, etc. And 
Now I'm in Nashville traffic <laughs> going, <laughs> what did she, what? And I had to say, yeah, no ma'am, it wasn't inappropriate, but she not only knew the word, mm -hmm. she knew how to use it, mm -hmm. which I, I was amazed, but not every child is gonna hear certain words in yeah. certain t contexts, et cetera, and they're not gonna mm -hmm. understand what they make. You, you make a very good point on that, yes. Yes, you've got to either, depending on the child, you've got to bring it down to their level. It's not about you, it's about the child understanding what you're trying to get across. You know, one child might understand the word inappropriate, but there's some children that won't. They're gonna understand the simple words like, we don't touch each other because it's not nice. How did it make you feel when so-and-so did that to you? Did it make you feel bad? Yes. So you've gotta watch your wording on where they're at. It really depends on where they're at on what words you use for the rules. And also when we're accommodating special needs, the peers need to buy into this. And so sometimes they need some training, uh, especially if a person has behaviors that are a little more atypical and you're gonna have an extra personnel there or do modified activities, then that's, those other students need a chance to ask questions and, and be trained on how, do I, how can I be their friend? What you don't understand can be scary or you can be standoffish because you don't understand it. Kids are the same way. People say kids are cruel, but I don't think they're any more cruel than adults. But um, the more they understand, the more likely they are to accept it. I always talk to the parent if I'm gonna send a child to a classroom and say, I'm gonna go in and talk to them and do you mind if I tell them about autism or do, I, do you mind if I tell them about Down syndrome? or whatever, and then I tell those students at a level that I think they can understand. There are lots of books, many of mine I just gave away in Madova, so I don't have very many right now, I gotta restock, but this was one I had about a girl with Down syndrome, it's, you're enough, but it explains to a child what Down syndrome is in words that they can understand. And so, you know, they're, Amazon, just put in, maybe not disability that you're talking about, but most disabilities, you can put it in there and they'll give you a list of books that would be about that subject. And so something at that child's level, even adults, I use children's books because they're just a few words. I'm not gonna give you the whole lecture of what you'd learn if you were gonna be a doctor and that, but, but just enough to understand what that disability is and what it might look like and what they might need. And so then the children are like, well, yeah, we wanna help them because they start to understand that, you know, this is something I can do to be a part of the church myself. I can be a helper. So some, some training is to help them understand that we're all different. And I've got that different sign up there and I use that with, with students to remind them that there's things different about each of us. And so um, we want to tell the story and give the information and answer their questions. And I tell them no question is off limits. Ask whatever you wanna ask. But I don't do this in front of the child or the VIP. Um, I do that with them not present so that they don't have to be embarrassed about what, especially like wheelchairs and canes and stuff. They just need to know it. And then when you're picking somebody to be a buddy, you would think, well, so-and-so is always good and they do such an excellent job and they've memorized every Bible verse I know. They might not be the best one. Some of my best buddies in school were the children from the behavior class. Mm -hmm. And you say, what? Yep. They understand that sometimes you can't keep everything together. And so especially on a field trip, I like to, feel, to pair, pair them with mine so they had a buddy that was gonna be, have some empathy for them. If you've never been in that situation, it's kind of hard to have as much empathy for it, and you're kind of like, what's wrong with them? Why are they doing that, you know? And so the judgment's not there if you also have had a few problems of your own. And so some of the ones with hidden disabilities, like a behavior issue or something, sometimes are really good, but you have to watch out. If they have really poor impulse control and would run out of your room, they're probably gonna take your <laughs> VIP out of the room with them, you know? You know which ones uh, would not be able to help somebody. Uh, if they don't take turns well, then they probably won't share with the buddy well. If, uh, 
their language is not great, then they're probably going to teach some words you don't want them to teach or <laughs> something. But just pay attention, and it's something they've got to want to do to find a pair. You don't always have to have a pair buddy, but in some cases it's good. I like the whole class to just kind of know the situation and say, I want you to be their buddy, I want you to be their friend, and then you kind of see as time goes by, oh, so-and-so's doing a really good job with them. So today when we go to uh, this trip, I'm going to ask them to sit with them because you kind of can see them. But also in your classroom, if you have someone that you know needs to move around, you want to plan extra space for them, give them a corner where they can roam that whole corner and they're not disrupting where you're up here teaching because uh, they might need extra spa space. They might need the step-by-step -step direction like I showed on the nose blowing. Pictures would be fine or just taking it slow. Tell them one thing to do and then the next thing to do after they've done the one thing. So that, that. And another one. I, I said I only have one pet peeve. This no, is this one. is another one. <laughs> Don't ask a yes and no question unless no's can be an answer. Because I don't know how many teachers would come in and say, do you want to go with me? And it's like maybe speech or something. It's in their schedule. They have to do it. Their parents are expecting them to go to speech. The whole school expects them to go to speech. So what happens when they say no? You don't come in and ask them, do they want to do something if that's not really a choice? Do you want to go to PE today? Well, if it's PE day, everybody in the room's going to PE unless you're in trouble. <laughs> so you can't ask them, do they want to? So it, don't ask a yes and no question unless you're okay with no. Because they do need choices. But some things are not that negotiable. So no should not be available to them when it can't be. And transitions. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's a biggie. If you're going to move a group from one activity to the other or from one room to another, they need some warning. Even for cleanup. If they're playing and enjoying clean, cl cleaning up and don't enjoy playing, they're not going to want to stop and clean up. Give them some warning. In five minutes, we're cleaning up. Okay, in three minutes, we're cleaning up, and it's almost time we're about to clean up. They'll go ahead and start cleaning by the time you've done that. <laughs> and so, you know, give them some warning ahead of time or put it in their schedule, whatever it takes to help them make those transitions from one activity to the other or from one setting to the other. You can uh, set a timer on your phone because that's something that they can hear to know. Start with five minutes, okay, that's our five-minute warning, and then just bring the timer down to however long you need it. They make those, th there's a red line and it kind of mm -hmm. goes away and when the red's all gone, the time's up too. So that's a good visual timer mm -hmm. to see those. Um, but that works. Uh, communication, we said behavior is part of communication, but some of our children have some communication skill problems. Everyone has a mode of communication, whether they're vo vocal or not. It might be behaviors is their mode of communication. If you think of an infant, you know that they communicate different things. It may, to someone who doesn't know them, all they hear is a baby crying, but to the mother, she knows which cry that is. They're hungry, they're sleepy. You know, you start to recognize it, and so they are communicating in that way. So um, we call it total language in the school system. But a child who has trouble with communication would benefit from see it, say it, sign it, sign it mm -hmm. or show, show it. it. It can be a gesture. It doesn't have to be an American Sign Language sign. But uh, a picture, that's why we peer a lot of pictures with stuff. Uh, <coughs> some children aren't even ready for a picture. They need to see the real item. So I've had little boards that we would put the objects on. Say if you were going to do a Bible story, you'd have a, a little book first that looked like a Bible story book and then you're going to play a game you'd have a little game piece on there so they could see the actual objects that represented what you were going to be doing. Um, some would need a picture of the real people of the real things because they're not really ready for more abstract and some are fine with just a drawing but um, even a child who didn't need the pictures it's not going to hurt them and a child who has cognitive delays, it's going to help that get faster through the brain system to see the picture as well as hear the words. So 
Um, if you see something, you think, well, it just seems to take them a second longer to comprehend and do what I asked them to do. That's that comprehension part that may need a, the picture to help it go a little faster. And um, when uh, you're, we definitely want to use kind words. We just talked about kindness for the room, but the mothers in here will tell you a lot of things have been said to us and it's not always kind. Walmart can be one of the worst places to, to hear comments and uh, I, I don't know. I've, heard, I've had people say, what's wrong with your child? I've had people say, um, can your child learn anything? Those kind of things. It really, it's hurtful. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they mean it. I think they want to start a conversation. But uh, just think about, would I want anybody to say this to me? Can I learn anything? Because evidently, it takes me a long time to learn anything. <laughs> so, so just be careful of how you speak to that child and that family. Um, and also, we tend to want to fix it for them or tell them everything's going to be okay. If they're sharing a problem with you, it might not be that everything's going to be okay right away or ever, you know, and you can't fix it. So, you know, don't minimize what they're saying or try to offer them false hope or tell them, well, so-and-so had the same thing and they took vitamins and now they're fine. That, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so th these are things we've been told. <laughs> if I can ever be of any kind of, assist of assistance or if there's anything I can ever do, please call me. So I think that's an important part of communication, but also know your body language is communication, your facial expression. Even a face that, that's um, not frowning, if it's not smiling, the kid's not quite sure what to think of that. And so they may not understand that you're friendly if you, that if your ex facial expression is just neutral, they might not understand that you're uh, just being that. And then gestures, um, a lot of hand signals. Just try to talk to somebody that speaks a different language and you'll learn quick that you can learn some signals for stuff. <laughs> you may not know American Sign Language, but you'll come up with something to help you do that but color coding things help sign language does help so that we have started because mar is the one who uses sign language in stars but we have started in stars every morning to do the day of the weekends the months are hard for us we're not ready for them but yeah. we're doing the days of the week and then a word of the week and so we're learning a few sign language words together that way um, and then again i told you that it's a form of communication. They could be sleepy, tired, hungry, sick, in pain, um, bored, anything like that. But behaviors are going to occur. So we have to, most of my slides are about behavior. And that's why you have this whole section on rules. Because the rest of it was about the consequences. And uh, the three R's is in one of these books, probably this one. This is about. Uh, special needs in church um, every child welcome it's a really good book and it has a lot of uh, strategies in there to use so uh, redirect just try to get their mind off whatever they've gotten stuck on and back to what you want them to do or something totally different just use gentle voice move them towards something you want them to have place it in their hand if you need to you know, it could be a fidget, it could be something you're fixing to use, like they're going to use crayons next and say, would you like the blue one? And you're just ignoring the other thing because you wanted to get back. Would you like the blue one or the green one? You know, trying to, trying to help them redirect them back to something. That's usually, we'll do a lot of it. And then you can start reinforcing the kids who are behaving. I like the way you are sitting and you have quiet feet and you're listening, you know, and then they're like, hey, they're getting the attention and and uh, I, I, want, I want the attention, so I need to do that too. I've, I've seen, I don't know how many, you should see it in an auditorium of kids. I'm going to choose someone who's sitting up straight. The whole class is suddenly, <laughs> everybody yeah. in the auditorium sits up nice and straight and quiet, so they'll get chosen. So uh, it just reinforcements like that, when you reinforce the good behavior, uh, will go a long ways. Sometimes materials need to be removed. It's causing a problem. 
and you just need to remove that. Yeah. And that might cause a meltdown, but still for safety of everyone yeah. around, it had to be removed. Uh, or sometimes for their safety, the child has to be removed. And you could take them out and talk to them. They might could calm down and go back. They might not can. But uh, I have had the cases, and it would be harder at church, where if they can't be moved easily, you remove the other children. But whatever it takes to be safe. And I think teachers next to each other should know, especially if there's a child that might have those type of attentions. If my whole class shows up at your door, just let them in and know that we'll be over there to get them as soon as we can get things calmed down over here. And that's all they need to know at that time. They'll just bring them in and say, okay, everybody go to that corner and we'll, we'll get back to our lesson. And that way they didn't witness it and they were safe. Because when they witness a lot of the bad behaviors, then they start to form an opinion that that child is bad. And so that's gonna hurt that peer relationship really bad. So it's better if they're removed if possible so they can calm down and you can have a safe place for them to go and calm down or if need be for safety, if they're not moving, move everybody else. And. Uh, even if you don't have anything worked out ahead of time, just let the teachers know. If they ever show up, it's okay. Just take them. So that's, that's uh, the short of it. But there's a lot of challenging behaviors. Part of the behavior is don't start a habit you don't want to break. If you let that habit start, then you're gonna, you're gonna be fighting to break that habit. So if you don't want them throwing things, the first time they throw it, you've got to nip it. I mean, you don't have to be harsh about it or anything, but don't start a habit you don't want to have to break later on. Yes, that is. <laughs> a lot of these are any, any child. child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Expectations are important. Mm -hmm. You need to expect them to behave and you need to expect them to learn. If they ha we all will do better if somebody expects us to do. If nobody has any expectations for you, you're not going to care whether you do it or not. And then they need to know the boundaries. That's where the rules come in, and the rules have to be enforced. You have to be consistent about them and stuff like, well, sometimes it's okay if you scream and yell in my class, and sometimes it's not okay. You ha it has to be consistent what you want done clear stated objectives. Today we will be learning about so that they know what's expected, what they're going to learn about and choices are good and lots of praise. I gave you a sheet on the back of your paper. I don't have one on my own. Uh, they say it takes um, 10 positives to undo one negative. So if you really had to fuss at a child, you can eat you need to come up with 10 good things to say to that child. Not all at once, because it's that, you know, but just know that it's gonna, it's, you have, you're rebuilding that relationship. And if you're always trying to say affirming things to the children, then you're gonna say a lot of them naturally. Can y'all think of some that would work in general? There was a list, but I decided you didn't need a list. You could come up with your own. You did feel good listening today? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did a great job sitting still. Yeah. Sometimes you need to share. But you just, I had one of my first principals taught me this with pennies. If you really have a problem with it, I suggest this method. She gave me 10 pennies. And she said, put these in your pocket. If you have to fuss at this child again, then every time you say something nice to him, move your penny to another pocket. And you cannot fuss at that child again until you've said 10 nice things to that child. <laughs> I think the rule that we have for one negative thing we say to that child, we have to say three positive things to that child. She just told us 10. Well, she said 10, but in like the school setting, like, but it amounts to 10. So if you're fussing at somebody, and it's just that one time, you still need to at least say, okay, well, this is what you did, but you're doing really good at coloring. You're sitting still. You're using your quiet voice. You're holding the attention. 
I mean, for every one, just think of it that way, for every one negative thing, make sure you have three positive things you can also tell that child within that one, two minutes of timing. She's being realistic. I'm going to the extreme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the budget government place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, on boundaries, sometimes it's a physical boundary. They need to see if you're talking about this is where you should stay. Um, tape on the floor. Mm -hmm. We're not going past this line. Works. So they can visually see it. You can tell them, we, we don't go out the door, but if there's a piece of tape there, sometimes it's like, we don't pass that line. <laughs> I don't know. The door looks like it should be enough physical boundary, but you know, sometimes it takes something a little more with it to help them get that physical boundary. A stop sign. We have stop, stop sign. We have stop signs on our doors. Stop signs work really good. Just put up a little stop sign. So the next thing is about the cause of the behavior. We always think it's for attention, and it's not. There can be a lot of causes. It could be they just wanted attention. They needed that social interaction with, with probably you because maybe they're not getting enough at home or something, who knows why, but some kids require more. And it could be that they don't want to do what you want them to do and they're going to find a way to avoid it or escape it. And it could be that there's something they want to get. And like this, this one you see at Walmart all the time. They want a toy and mama said no. And everybody gets to witness a meltdown. <laughs> because they wanted something and that they wouldn't keep doing it if it didn't work. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about these behaviors. They have to work or you don't keep doing them. So know when you have a child that consistently is doing something, it's like, what is working about this for this child? They're getting the attention that they wanted. They're getting to escape something. They're getting the toy they wanted at Walmart, whatever it is. And then the, the automatic is more sensory. It could be something they're thinking about that you can't even see, but causing them to, to have that. But it could just be the lights, fluorescent lights, or it could be the noise. Um, I actually got really ill in Sam's one time over the buzzing lights, and they don't usually affect me. And I, I knew when I went in, it was bothering me. I could hear them buzzing, and I just and by the time, I got just a few things and got out of there because it was just like, I can't take this, you know. But I'm an adult and I can self-regulate. This buzzing light, and it, usually that doesn't bother me, but it was that day. Whatever was going on in there was more than I could handle. And so we're going to come up with a few things, and you hold up the signs on your table, whether you think this is attention, escape, tangible activity, or automatic. You got some? Yep. Okay. Okay. Do you want to talk about ABC? You first? see them on the table? No, we'll just okay. identify the causes. All right, so the, beha the They're on the back and front of each one. So try and save some paper. Yep. The antecedent is student is required to participate in Bible class. The behavior will be student wanders away from assigned area and stands in a corner of the classroom. So what do you think? Mm hmm so what would be the consequence? How would you redirect the child to come back into the Bible study? That's the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the hard part. Let the student take a five minute break. Take them out of the room, let them walk, let them pace, and then bring them back into the Bible lesson. Escape, it's really important that they do have to come back to it. Mm -hmm. Even like if it's a school activity, or they didn't like doing math. Well, you can't just throw a fit and never do math, you know. So you have to come back and do the activity once you get calmed. Okay. The next one. Staff are helping others and are other students or have moved students to an area of a classroom. The student begins yelling loudly. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to redirect the attention? <laughs> I 
<laughs> they're yelling in your class. Now. They're yelling in your crash class. And they're yelling because they want the attention. <laughs> Go ahead. This one's a tough for, one for me because I've been trained to ignore. That's what we have been trained to do. It's okay to ignore the to some extent. To some extent, <laughs> to ignore it. They're seeking their attention seeking, which means they're seeking your attention, but they're doing it in a way that's not appropriate. So, Another option is everyone over here is listening, yeah. so I'm going to come over here, here. and talk mm -hmm. to you guys. Mm -hmm. Like he does when we won't respond in church and goes in to the other <laughs> side. He, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then after they calm down, then you give them back the attention. Now, you can't always ignore the attention seeking because it will become safe and it will become distracting. So that's when you, you might have to pull, again, pull the child out, take a little five minute breather, talk to them about it. Okay, I know you want my attention right now, but I have to do this, this, and this before I can give you the attention that you need. Okay. Students on the playground disengaged with play equipment and peers. The behavior is he's picking up handfuls of dried grass and throwing them into the air, watching them fall. It's automatic. It's automatic. Oh, it's a sensory thing. Enjoy, enjoy mm -hmm. doing it. Yeah. Yep, there is no consequence to this one. The consequence is when, he, when the grass falls or the dirt falls on, its, on their head, it's a natural consequence. They will either not do it again or keep doing it because it's a century thing that they like. Or it got in their eye. Mm -hmm. so. Or when they pick up the dirt and eat the dirt or the grass, it's not going to taste good for them, so it's a natural consequence. Okay. Student is disengaged during independent playtime. The behavior is they're kicking, hitting peers around the classroom. Tangible. Attention. Tangible. They so may have wanted a particular toy. Or yeah, they could be wanting a particular center. toy. They want to go to a certain center. So how do we, what's the consequence and how do we redirect them? You can go ahead after they calm down, only after they calm down, do you let them have the preferred activity. But they're going to have to give you like five minutes in sitting down, being calm and quiet before they can have that preferred what they want. I mean, it could be a toy. Um, I don't like giving iPads. A lot of people hand iPad as soon as they start. Here's an iPad. I don't like doing that. I guess that's just my generation. We never had a device thrown at us. Um, with Nick, when he wanted something and he just stomp his feet and just like, I'm not moving until I get it. I'm like, well, then we can stand here all day. But we have to do this, this, and this before you're going to get into this activity, before you can go ride your horse or feed your horse. You've got to make your bed and clean your room. So, you know, that's a little difficult because you want them to quit kicking and screaming because they want that right then, but don't give in to them right that second. Let them calm down, give them five minutes, and maybe even give them another task before they can have what they were trying to get. You have it. It'd be okay to never give them that activity. Not never, but to, you, you know, let's say it's it's the iPad, mm -hmm. and, and because of your actions now, you actually don't get it. Yes, yeah, yeah, so. that is perfectly fine. Yes, um, I'm not good at, at some of this <laughs> with my own <laughs> child. It's easier with other people's children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. But uh, I was going to give Mara back her pudding cup and Angie's like, no, she can't have it, she threw. And so at the end, I took it home and thought, well, I'll give it to her at home. Well, she went to her room and Bobby ate it and I thought, well, that was probably good because <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't give in, but I didn't hear. Yeah. 
Not because I wouldn't have given in. <laughs> it's just I didn't get the chance to give in that yeah. time, and she didn't get that pudding cup. <laughs> yeah. The thing with the tangible, I think that's hard for everybody because we don't like seeing them upset. In general, we don't like seeing our kids upset. We don't like them screaming and kicking and acting out. But there has to be expectations and limits to how much we can do because we want – we. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, we want them to become an able body in society and be able to flow with society. That has always been my goal with Nick, and I have been very, very lucky. I've had a great su support system with my mom. I would call her crying on days, like, what do I do? He's, he's in here. He's been crying for 30 minutes. What do I do? And she'd just sit there and say, go to your room, shut your door, let him cry it out. You're just going to have to stay firm. You're doing what you need to do to get him to where he needs to be. So y'all need to remember that. And don't take anything personal. Trust me, some of these kiddos, are they're going to spew some stuff at you, say some words that are not so nice. Don't take it personally. And when the behavior happens and it's done and over with, let it go. You know, like the Frozen song, let it go. <laughs> Just let it go and move that's, on to the next thing. That's your hardest thing, is yes, letting go. Yes, is letting it go, yeah. Because I feel like I've done something to per to cause the behavior, which I didn't. It should never carry over to the next time they're in class mm -mm. with you. No, it's it's that one and done. It's, mm -hmm. it's behind you. It's fresh start. There is a sheet. And I don't, you have something to say, Mom? I was just going to say, what I did with, with it. Nick, it was hard on me being the grandmother because I wanted to give him everything. You know, she'd get after him, and I just wanted to hug him. But, you know, I knew I couldn't, so I'd have to walk away. Yeah, but when you got that first hug a couple of weeks ago, yeah. it was worth it. Yeah, he, he very rarely spoke. Mm -hmm. I mean, he'd come in. I lived in the same house for 30 years. First thing he does when he comes in the door is he goes down the hallway and checks every single room to make sure everything is still the same. Mm -hmm. And now he's, what, 19? 20. Just 20? He just yeah, turned he 20. Just, just turned 20. He now actually talks to me, and he'll give me a hug. And that was the best day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Chrissy cried when she got her first trip yeah. too, yeah. The, this sheet that you have, you may never use it. Use it with your spouse, if nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're not sure what's causing a behavior, <laughs> you should have put that sheet up front. <laughs> just go down and answer the yes and no questions that relate to it, and it will kind of whichever one has the most yes oh they wanted attention or oh they were escaping i asked them a honeydew list and they escaped it you know when, <laughs> by having this big argument with me or whatever so it just those are or it's really good when you can't figure it out mm -hmm. to have a list or, let me see let me think about this behavior and as teachers we need to do this sometimes brainstorm with each other we see a behavior and it's reoccurring mm -hmm. but we're not quite sure why what's going on so we can start analyzing together when does it happen writing it down helps mm -hmm. to just write down what happened what time of day it was because it might find out that it's about the time and the dates help too because mm -hmm. uh, it might be a certain day of the week maybe they go to mama's the night before and da or daddy's or something you know there's different situations for different kids and they might start seeing a pattern if dates and times are down to, to that or they only do it when so-and-so's with them but not when they're not <laughs> here you know those kind of things you kind of can help you see and then to also know what do they want attention do, do they want to escape what's going on and so um, those are really helpful I would keep that if I was you. If you threw the rest of it away, I would keep that one. <laughs> I've used it a lot. Now, you didn't have consequences on there, but you'd think you want to do positive and never negative, but positive reinforced behaviors. So if it's not a behavior you want to reinforce, then you don't want to use positive reinforcement. Mm -mm. And that's what happens when you buy that toy or give them that iPad or mm -hmm. whatever. You are giving them a positive reinforcement and you are guaranteeing that it's going to happen again. It's the habit you started that you don't want to break. 
And so sometimes there are negative consequences. If you were listening in church this morning, <laughs> <laughs> the Lord has negative consequences for us sometimes. He called it discipline. <laughs> and so, you know, if you love your child, sometimes there are negative consequences to what they do. And I'm not going to tell you how to discipline your child. It might be you're going to paddle them. It might be you're going to put them in time out. It might be you're going to take away privileges. But the same can happen with your Sunday school or whatever group you're having. But the rules need to be established. These are what we do. I give you a warning. I give you a second warning. The third warning, you're going to, we're going to talk to mama. Or whatever you decide is fair for you. It's got to be something you can live with. It's got to be something you're willing to do every time that happens. So, and at church, it's not spank them. <laughs> That's not <laughs> one of the options. <laughs> and time out is not real feasible either. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to kind of look, what's gonna, what can we do? Brainstorm with each other. What could our consequences be? And then stick to them. Because once they know that, well, I don't like this, and that's what they do every time I do it, they're not going to keep doing that. They're going to do something different. But if they get something they do like, and it some of what we're telling you is kind of a positive reinforcement. Like go to a, another room, a sensory room or something. They, they will do it to escape, so they can do that. But when it's interfering with the learning of others and it's not safe, then it's okay. Because, yeah, they got what they wanted. But at the same time, I don't know how you balance that. Mm -hmm. So uh, just know that there are negative consequences that mean the behavior will stop because they don't like it. And it, it may not happen every time. Reinforcement can come occasionally, especially if it's positive. Mm -hmm. If you want uh, me to keep working for you, then you keep giving me a paycheck, mm -hmm. you know. And then we, we have that arrangement. But if you only pay me every now and then, well, eventually I'm probably not going to keep coming to work for you, you know. So, but we want to make this where it's not every time so that they can learn <laughs> to self-regulate. I had a child that went to Vanderbilt psych and they called me from Vanderbilt because they were about to send him back to school and they said, what kind of positive reinforcement do you have? And I said, well, we give out lots of stickers. Well, here he gets to go swimming if he does this or that. And I'm like, we don't have a pool. Yeah. <laughs> He's not going swimming, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it's got to be something that you can consistently do and stickers, praises, those kind of things go a long ways with child. And sometimes it can be food, but I would talk to the family before I do food. Food would not be my first choice because allergies and hyperactivities and, you know, choke hazards, there's so many things to food. It should not be your first choice of a reinforcement. But if it's the only thing that works for that child, then you may have to resort to it. I mean, we had one with post-it notes. All he wanted was post-it notes. So we just went to Walmart and bought tons of post-it notes. And if he got five checks for the whole day, he got a whole pack of post-it notes for the day. Did you have a question? Yeah, what do you do? You have a, a classroom of 10, and this mm -hmm. one's kind of getting special attention because they're getting Skittles and post-it notes and stickers, and the other ones aren't. Well, that's, well, talking to them in the beginning was helping so that they know that there's a reason. But also, it needs to be... They need something for being good, too. Mm -hmm. You need to set up a reward system based on your rules. You're following these rules. You get the prize, whatever it can be. I hear what you're saying, but, I mean, we're... It could be at the end. You get in the treasure chest if you've had good today, yeah. and you might have stickers or can little candies, whatever you got. You know, everybody mm -hmm. who did this, that's the way school usually does it, a treasure chest at the end of the day. You get in the treasure chest if you've done what you're supposed to do so otherwise you're reinforcing the other children to negatively to well if I acted like they acted then I could get this you know yeah. so. you, you could set up like a classroom chart um I'm trying to think what did I do Randy I can't remember it was the Sundays oh the Ten Commandments um they got awarded for every time they come in and knew one of the Ten Commandments they got a sticker and it, they got all 10 stickers. They got a Sunday at the end of that 10 weeks because we went through all 10 commandments one week at a time. You could do something like that where if 
the whole class gets stickers for five Sundays in a row. They get a prize at the end of those five days, those five weeks. But you just need to, if you do that, you also got to realize that you might have to sort of give a little to the child that needs that little extra incentive. I'm trying to think what else we could do there. Because I understand what you, I understand what you're saying on that. Cause, cause, you know. Well, and some when you're first learning a new skill, you can't wait five weeks. Yeah, it's got to be rewarded sooner than that. So it's it's okay if other kids are getting it too, as long as it's something affordable. I mean, it can it can be praise to start with, but and a sticker goes a long way, or a check mark on the paper, and that didn't cost anybody anything. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody got a check mark today for doing this, so that there's some kind of reinforcement right away. You know, especially in our society, we all want reinforced right instant away. gratification. Yeah, so something that's very accessible, it's the size wise, it's not going to something you got to truck in here, yeah. you know, or anything that it's something that they can um, have re rewarded. And it's not the swimming pool and stuff like that. That's something doable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's inexpensive. <laughs> And uh, you will hear a, a lot about generalization because you might teach them to act a certain way when they come to your group because of your rules and your consistency, but they go to a new class and they're not doing the same thing there. It's because they didn't learn to generalize, I always do this, you know. So the same things kind of have to follow with them to help them get that into whether I'm at home or at school or wherever I'm at. Uh, Without home, you can't do anything about home. But we, we dealt with a lot of bad language at school. And our society's getting worse and the language in schools is getting worse. Yep. And so these kids hear it and don't even know that they shouldn't be saying it. But you can teach them not to say it at school. Because of the consequences, they, they soon learn. Oh, that's, that's not a school word. We don't say that at school. And it's a shame that that doesn't generalize, <laughs> but they're still hearing it at home and they're still using it at home. So uh, I don't know how many lessons I didn't do with one little girl about fighting. And no matter how many scenarios I told her about, every time she said, I'd hit them. Hit them. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. Em. I'm going to fight. And I'm like, I'm sure you are, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. I've told you all I know to tell you. And, and, but she's from a different environment than I'm in. And who knows, I might would be fighting too if I was, was there. So most of these pages tell you about the first then and how to um, de-escalate. Then it talks a little bit about replacement. And the thing about replacement behaviors, if you don't want them to do a certain thing, then you need to teach them to do something different. The replacement behaviors have to work better for you, or at least as well, as the bad behavior, or it, you're not going to, um, it, won't, it won't hold up. It, so you have to, it has to have the same function if it was attention. The replacement has to be for attention too. Whatever the function of the first behavior was, whatever you can teach them would be some, and you're going to positive reinforce. I've had children that had to be a few minutes at a time. And with that, I usually put a piece of tape down on their desk and come by and give them a check mark because they're doing it now. This is what I want you to do, and you're doing it. Oh, you're still doing it. There's another check mark. Oh, you're still doing it. There's another check mark. So that they can get right away. Now, eventually, I didn't come by quite as often. I still would give them a check mark. I, oh, you're still sitting on your bottom. Good job. You know, and so, um, but whatever, it, if it was for attention, then that might would work to keep giving them that reinforcement right away and then slowly decrease it. And then they never know if you're going to come by and give them a check mark or not eventually, but they will. The next one I want you to, well, we'll stop on behavior and see if anybody has any questions about behavior before we move on. Okay, y'all, I've got it. So now know that they're going to have meltdowns. <laughs> yes, no, we're going to have meltdowns. <laughs> Is that true? So plan for it. That's what I was telling you about. The teacher next to you might need to know. I have a child that might have a meltdown 
and I may have to remove them. A safe spot is good. It's hard when every classroom's full, which is a good problem to have. I'm glad that we're growing. But whenever classroom's full, it's kind of hard to have a spot. So it might have to be a corner in your room where uh, they have can, can go and have a little bit of privacy and a little bit of space over in a corner or something. But try to think of a, of a safe place. Um, and then try to be preventive in that uh, smells. You may have heard this before. A lot of uh, cleaning products, perfumes, things like that, they can set people off. Mm -hmm. Even um, I had a child who did not want to go to class to inclusion and just kept refusing. And I finally was able to talk to the child enough. And he said, she smells like smoke. Mm -hmm. And so that was bothering him enough that he did not want to go in there and have to do his math when she would come over to help him. And he didn't like the way she smelled. So it's not, you know, I'm not saying, but don't think a lot of perfume will cover that up because some of them cannot handle the perfume either. So um, you have to be careful. Um, the Glade plug-ins and the melts sometimes will, they don't like those smells either. Or even the essential oils. If you get too much going, they, some of them can't handle all that. So just know that, you know, you don't want a lot of scents. And if, if they have lights like these, they can be covered. Mm -hmm. Amazon sells some pretty ones that look like clouds or hot air balloons or something. And it goes, it's a cloth and it goes on the outside of it. And they're safe. Um, and loud noises. Um, I could never take Mara to a concert. She couldn't handle it. She would not, she doesn't like to wear earphones, but she could not handle it. And the reason I know this is because Special Olympics has a dance at the end. Mm -hmm. We do not make it to the dance because she cannot handle that noise. And some love it. That's the highlight of it. They've, they've been good all no, weekend Jonathan, so they can go to yeah, Jonathan Somebody would be like having it. a great time at the dance party. <laughs> Jonathan doesn't like the dance either. He won't go to the dance either. Yeah, he doesn't go to the dance either. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so just knowing that, we're all different. And it's okay. But Certain noises. Mm -hmm. Now, Allie can listen to music all day long. She will even blow your ears off. But if, and it's certain things about environment as well, but to walk from the car into here to, you know, she doesn't do it at home, but to go from the car into Walmart and back out, etc. If we don't have those headphones on, she, she mm -hmm. will have a meltdown. Yeah. And it's something about of course, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother most people. But it's something about the amount of what's going on and the noise, the way it's going in, and her brain is processing it. But now, as soon as she gets in the car, or like as soon as she comes in here and there's music going and all the things, well, that's fine for her. It can be something that a tick, 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 tick for some people. Mm -hmm. I had those little things. <laughs> My grandma would tell them to me. Um, that you sit in the window and the moving picture stuff. Mm -hmm. It drives my husband up the wall. Now, I don't even hear them. And of the two of us, I'm the hyper person. <laughs> He's the more calm person. You would think that the tick, tick, tick would be cool for him. No. So it could be the littlest of noises that can just set them off, for and, sure. And even yeah. in music, sometimes it's a, what kind of That's music right. <laughs> might, might be affecting them. But you kind of get to know that. The parents kind of get to know what kind of things set them off. Asked about the triggers. And one lady, I guess her child had a lot of triggers. She forgot to tell me that frogs was a trigger. Oh, yeah. And oh, so yeah. we started singing. Oh, yeah. green speckled frogs <laughs> the child had a green major and then I'm yeah. talking to the mother about lady she said, oh I didn't tell you she's terrified of frogs I'm like I needed to know that we didn't have to sing that song we could have had five little monkeys jumping on the bed <laughs> or when or when the fire alarm goes off and they didn't oh, yeah. they didn't let us know that the lights flashing and the noise would send them 
running, so we're chasing, trying to catch the child and getting everybody else in line, and so, yeah. Just be alert and, yeah. and be ready for those situations because they're going to come up and try to find a place to calm them down, whether it's a safe room, safe corner, or allowing them a pl place to pace. Or it might, here we've, we've used the car before. Just Mar and I go sit in the car. And that way, I know she's safe. She knows she's safe. And if she calms down enough, we can come back in. If she doesn't, we can go on home. <laughs> is, your, is your kind of calm down corner still in your room over here? It, it was. It got moved for the shoe boxes right now. But yeah, I did have her calm down corner in the room in there. If uh, Chris had hung me a, a curtain, but it's, it's down now. Uh, where it has these little spaces like that one on the wall there that stick down further. Okay. And he had hung the curtain around that square. You know, just tucking it in the edges, and then we had her bean bag there, so she thought it was a really cool spot. So that that did work for her, but we'll put it back when when uh, uh, the shoebox stuff is cleared out a little more. But yeah, the, things like that, just having a plan, and then it, I think it's really important that you know that they're not to be left alone. I don't think that should have to be told you, but sometimes. Um, if there's only one person in the room, which is not ideal, but maybe one teacher went to the bathroom with somebody else and then this one needs to go to a calm down room, you know, you can't take them and go and you can't send them by themselves, so you're going to have to wait. But um, there is a bathroom and when it's special needs, it's not babies. And so we're not, we only have a few people that will do that. So you can let us know that they need help in the bathroom or they need a diaper change or whatever because I will do it. I've talked to a couple of other people in the church that are willing to do that at events and stuff. So um, know that if you're working with them, that's not your job. We don't do any routine medical stuff. We're not giving out medications. We're not checking uh, blood sugar, nothing like that. Only emergency stuff and then the emergency team would take over in place of us at that point if there was stuff. I do think it's real important that you all know that there is the AED machine upstairs and where it is, because mm -hmm. you might be asked to go get it. If you don't know where it is, go up there and look so you know where it is. Do you know where there's a first aid kit? Mm -hmm. Okay, those are things you need to know because that's something you could do for anyone. And it wouldn't be more for these than others. Some of these do have seizures, but so do other people have seizures. So you need to know the, the, about seizures if you have a student that has seizures. And I think the uh, main thing is to get them comfortable, calm, safe, mm -hmm. and time it and send for help. But you start timing a seizure. Uh, you may or may not, I would talk to individuals about how they usually handle their seizures. They may or may not end up needing transported to a hospital, but they might. Start timing it. and. Talk to the parents, or is this something you want done? Because I would call, at school, I would call the school nurse, but I would start timing as soon as the seizure started. We seldom ever had to transport one to the hospital. They come out of it and they need just a place to calm down. And you don't put anything in their mouths. Mm -hmm. If you see that on TV movies don't. and stuff, you don't do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> They're not going to chew their tongue or swallow their mm -hmm. tongue. They might bite it, but it, so you know, it's just a little blood. Yeah, it's just a little bite. So they're not going to do that. You want to say anything about seizures? Um, I think normally if you know that they have seizures, you usually don't have to. But if it's longer than five minutes, then you probably do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the timing is important because they usually will come out of it in less than five minutes. So you're not looking at doing anything for them medically until after the five minutes. And a lot of them will have stuff to take for that and will have it with them. So that's just kind of knowing. Anytime there's an incident, whether it's somebody got hurt or eloped or had a major behavior issues, there are accident reports up here in the window. Be sure you fill out an accident report on what's going on there. Um, some students need a behavior plan. And we will talk to the parents or the caregivers in private and say, you know, the only way this child can or this adult can participate is if we put these actions into place. 
and then you, you work with that parent and come up with how, how often they can come, how much people they need with them, what kind of activities they can participate in. Otherwise, there are students that have been turned away from churches and not always at the church's fault. Sometimes it's for the safety of others. You'd hate, you hate that. And it's hard for me to talk about it because my daughter's really close to being one of those. Um, a few weeks ago, she pulled the hair of a visitor in our church. I was mortified. And uh, I don't know why. The little girl didn't do anything to her, and she just ran over during the sermon and pulled the child's hair. And we left. I didn't know what else to do, and I came back and talked to the mother after. But uh, that's her thing, and it has been since before I got her, and I don't, still don't know, even with the list and the training and triad, no one can tell me why this occasionally happens that she pulls hair. And she, she hasn't pulled. I, I had an interpreter when we took her to Ukraine that really helped me <laughs> with that situation. She told the people that we worked with, she pulls the hair of the people she likes. <laughs> and so one lady got upset towards the end of the week and she said, she must not like me. She never pulled my hair. <laughs> so, you know, but I, the lady was trying to help me. I pulled up one, once that time we were staying at the missionary's house and there was, we pulled up in his car and there was lots of cars there and I'm like, what's going on? He's like, oh, I forgot to tell you, we invited the Down syndrome association and meet here tonight so they can meet y'all and we've been out all day doing stuff and she was with us and I'm like okay Mar got a big dose of Benadryl before we went in <laughs> 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 and then they said she's real sleepy I said it's jet lag <laughs> so, what elopement. the elopement is an issue with uh, a lot of children Adults, they seem to outgrow it a little, but they do wander off occasionally still. So just know that when you're in a ministry, you want to keep eyes on them. And if they head in, if you're taking them outside, you need plans of we're going there and these are the people going to help us watch them and, and this is where we're going to stay. A, a boundary that they can see, whether you have to tape it off, line cars up, whatever you need to do so they know that we're going right down there and that's the only place you can go. But... Um, and if there is an issue, we want to deal with it immediately and get everybody on board to, to find that child. Um, Mara eloped. She doesn't anymore, but she, I don't say she couldn't again, but she eloped a lot as a young child. And once she got away from me in Coles, right as I was about to pay, and once I realized she's not still standing here, I run to look for her. Bobby went out the door. She, <coughs> she hadn't already gone out. And the lady's yelling at me, wait a minute, you haven't paid yet. I didn't take my stuff with me. I just went, I said, we've got to find my child. They did nothing to help me. Not to fuss at Coles. Maybe that lady didn't know what she was doing. But we did find her. She was under a rack of clothes. Just hiding under there. <laughs> <laughs> but I was without her at a women's thing in Gatlinburg and Children's Place had a child go missing. They immediately locked the doors to that store and started calling over the speaker every few minutes and explaining what that child was wearing, and I started bawling because I thought that's what I needed them to do at Coast because we were so scared. And so just know that elopement is a real issue and it can be real dangerous when you're in public places or a close road or... It makes your heart drop. Yeah. It makes your heart drop. I mean, instant. When you look around and they're just gone, you're like, wait a minute. So extra security with you going outside. You know, say, we're going to take ours out today, and we know we have this child with elopement. Can y'all go with us? Take the youth group with you. Just the extra pair of eyes or something, whatever you can do to uh, get that. I didn't mean to skip it in the behavior plan. <laughs> Um, we are, yeah. When there are activities and it is special needs adults, children, do, does, the, or, uh, how do I put this? Does the family fill out some sort of form giving you 
information to be able to go, okay, like let's say we got a sign here. You know what I'm saying? And I need to know what I need to do for her and vice versa, or wh whichever way you want to play it. And do, do, the, do we have those every time? So that you, they don't have to give every single thing, but I mean, just kind of a generalization of, okay, yes. and here's the big ones, you know, up here at the yeah. top. We do those at registration at our Christmas event, and then we let them be good for a year, and they look at it, and if it's still all the same information, then they don't even have to fill out another one till the next year. But, uh, yeah, we do it once a year. It, and they're long, and people fuss about it because it mm -hmm. backs us up at mm -hmm. registration. So um, now that people are getting more emails and stuff, it's easier if I can go ahead and send it to you and you have it filled out. But, um, yeah, we try to make sure we have more than just a one-sheet thing that we find out what their disabilities are. Uh, a lot of churches make you do an interview, and so that's not a bad thing. It's just time-consuming when you first visit the church. And you as a buddy say you're going to help somebody. You don't have a whole lot of information on them the first time. That's why you ask some real positive questions to the parents. What are the kind of things do they like to do? They'll start telling you because they want their child safe. And uh, so in a buddy bag, if you were going to go with that child, it would have the information. If there was an allergy, if it was elopement, if it was some seizures, if it was something like that that you needed to be aware of, it would be in there to tell you that that child needs a little she extra. You taught me that, right? Huh? For the car. So she now has her little thingy. Mm -hmm. And I finally found one that said, it was kind of general, but it said, I, you know, I am a special needs. Mm -hmm. And then in the um, console, because I thought, where do you put the, because if you get hit from the front and it's in the glove box and flying out and then it's mm -hmm. down there, then not, you know, all the things. But, you know, it's got all the details. Yeah, I had Mars on a, on the seatbelt, a little thing wrapped up, and and so it tells about her heart condition and everything else because it matters. And she couldn't tell them regardless of the situation, but in that situation, I might not be able to tell them. So exactly. Yeah. So um, we, but your point fits in right now. We are working because of starting the day program on policies and procedures. They're going to be similar to the children's, but written for adults. The children's apply like for any child here. The same ones apply unless we decide we needed to add something on the children's. But I have been working on those, and we'll continue to work on them and get, get those, and then we'll give them out to our families so that they know what. And it's basically the same thing. Don't come sick, you know, and uh, those are the type of things. Two, two people. With, you know, and uh, watching them that there's not, you're not watching them by yourself. The last one I have on this is about language um, and confidentiality. Um, it's people first, and you, especially older people, you'll hear them say the crippled child or, or the wheelchair bound person, um, and that's not the co collect, correct etiquette for it. Uh, my child's not the Downs child, you know, and so I, I don't worry about it, but it does offend some people. So you just try to put the child first, not their disability. There's no need to even mention their disability unless it's something important, like you're telling somebody that's fixing to watch your child about these are the characteristics you might see out of my child. But uh, Basically, we want to, when we're talking to the parents, emphasize their abilities, not their disabilities. And um, just let them know that they're accepted and that they're loved here. And I know th you group, because you've all worked with me, we don't want people that's going to pity them. Mm -hmm. Pity does not help. I don't, I don't think people mean to pity, but I've had substitutes come to school, and they just they'd be crying after a little while. And I'm like, this is not helping anybody. You know, if, if, if you really can't get past the pity, then you just don't need to, to do it. <coughs> but we want to respect them and um, always try to say something positive, even if you have to talk about behaviors. 
there's good things about their child and they need to hear that too. You know, you may have to st stretch it a little sometimes. <laughs> you may have to work hard to find, what am I gonna say positive? But you have to start with that and know that whatever you're talking about is not for standing in the hallway or standing in the auditorium. It needs to be a private conversation. When we first came, I told Matt I had concerns. He pulled me in his office. We talked about my daughter in great length. And so he was fully aware that she was going to snore during the sermon. <laughs> Which There's others that do that. Yeah, that's true. Laura is not the only sleeper. I can name names. <laughs> so, just... Um, I don't do it very often. <laughs> you might have your monitors up there. And we do get a picture release, like, for special events mm -hmm. and stuff. But, like, if you're being a buddy to someone and you decide what they're doing is really cute and you want to take a picture of it, share it with their family. And uh, their family can decide whether or not it goes on the church Facebook or whatever, but it's not for general social media. It's, we're, not, we're not going to do the, that. So uh, basically, I'm putting together these little bags. I have quite a few of them, and there will be a schedule this is not it but there will be a schedule this is a choice schedule of what you might you can ask the child what kind of things they like so there would be a schedule in there and um, something about that child and there would be a notebook in case you needed to write about something that happened good or bad and I've set out all this sensory stuff but there would be like a bag of sensory items different children like different things and some don't need them, most of them are fine. But there might be, if they use this kind, there might be something like that in there. Uh, these are Mara's here. I just used them with him because they were how to reinforce him. Do you want a high five or do you want uh, a hug was one of them or a thumbs up? And he could ch tell me which one he wanted me to give him for doing good. So that's why I had had them on his, but it was just some general communication cards. These are not magical. Uh, you can get online and find all the pictures you want on Google. Um, if you don't find them there, there are some that can be bought. The good thing about the ones that can be bought, like Board Maker, is you can then change the words and put their name or um, this one happens to say Bible study, but a lot of them would just say book or read or something when it had a picture of a book like that. So you, uh, you could change the word if you needed to. But though you pay for a membership on Boardmaker and then you have access to their stuff. So they're, they're a little bit more expensive. But then they also have the templates like you would put together. Uh, one that said church. You know, you could get that off there off their site and then the pictures so it's, it would save you a little work but I'm not sure it's worth the price because they're a little bit pricey but there's a lot of free stuff out there too for board maker and teacher paid teacher if you haven't been on there there's a lot, a lot there too but I, I would be glad to make you anything you need for a schedule or uh, first then or anything like that for a student and we can make it about that student. But just in general, say somebody just shows up and you're, they're sitting in front of you in church, that regular sensory bag works for most of them, but you might, they're really having a hard time. You might try to, if you want to be their buddy and bring a little more out there or something. Or if you're assigned to a child, maybe they're coming to Awanas or Lambs or stars and you, you want to come and be their helper, then you might have more. And we can always use people with talent, like can sew or crochet. These, uh, there's an adult size one out here somewhere, go on their arm and then it has things they can fidget on right there. So I don't crochet. The new Beth. The new Beth. Yep. We'll show them in the new Beth. <laughs> And we have some of these at church. 
and I've seen them, and she said, I know, we don't use these at school because of this, and I see that during the sermon. I guess you do, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So far, I haven't seen them hitting anybody too bad. So there's a little animal one that doesn't stretch quite as far. Yeah, those might be a little bit better. Yeah. So. <laughs> but you never know what children are going to do with it until you buy them and try them out. And, uh, but there's... A lot of this, it, you could spend a lot of money on sensory stuff, or you could go to Dollar General and spend, I mean, Dollar Mart and spend yeah. Dollar 25. Right. I resent that 25. <laughs> 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 and, and get stuff there. But Amazon has a lot, but Amazon's a little bit more pricey. And I'm then if you have friends like uh, Sandra over here that my so sister made the little crochet thing. She made these for weighted. It's just a washcloth with beans, or what is it? You got beans in it. Beans. And, you know, to know this is my lap, and it my, need to keep it down here. <laughs> and it's just something to hold and fidget with as well. So there's lots of things that could be made. Uh, she's made the little marble Marbles. tubes. Some of those are homemade that she made, and some of them are store-bought, so you can do both. And, like, sometimes go all the way through Dollar Tree because this is in baths, but a kid that likes soft cloth or likes frogs <laughs> wouldn't have been the little girl I talked about. But, <laughs> you know, they, you know, you never know what you could find that they might would like. And you're looking for quiet things. <laughs> I, I like a lot of them that I wouldn't use them in church, like uh, the spinners, because then they need a place to spin it. And even in your classroom, that might not be the greatest. Uh, like I said, my my daughter loves these that have the spiky, but she has the little animal one, and she just, I wouldn't give her this one in church. You know why? Ball. It's a ball, mm -hmm. she'll throw it. <laughs> uh, these reverse um, sequins, that one over there that, that he has is my favorite. It's like velvet on the back. And I'm like, that's the part that feels good to me. So, uh, there's lots of stuff like that, too. Um, you can get... Uh, slime and foam and stuff I suggest so you don't have the mess that you put it like in a Ziploc bag and tape it shut but then they can b build in it or put stuff in there to find and that works pretty good till it busts and then you just throw it away so any questions about the sensory items or why you would use them that's just a light especially like in a uh, a quiet room, you might have that where if you leave the big light off and they, yeah. yeah, they could uh, hit yes and no if they want to. They can turn the light on if it's no, they turn the light off. So there's, there's just gobs of stuff like that. So we're ready for question and answers, and we're about out of time. So <laughs> if you have any. Do you understand that by being here, you've signed up to be a buddy? It's <laughs> <laughs> for here, right? Yes, for at church. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's the services you're at. And um, if we see that there's a child, we might say, you know, could you help them when you're here and when they're here? Um, they, some churches make the family let them know ahead of time. And in a big church, I might see where that's very important. But um, the family can't be for sure because if there's a meltdown at home that morning or something, they're not coming. Mm -hmm. And so you might be all set and then they not come. But it wouldn't hurt if they could tell you ahead of time, my, ch my child's coming and, and we want to participate in this activity and could use some help. Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. That would be a good place to when you see stuff. I did set up a quiet corner at the fall festival last year, but it wasn't used by anybody but my grandchild. But they just played in it. But you know, it doesn't hurt to have a spot in case it's needed. It, and then it's nice if it's never needed. That's great. So I know it was a lot of information. I don't like to throw that many papers at anybody, but I felt like if. If you're going to be their buddy, you need some information on how, how to help them. Because behavior seems to be what stops people the most, because I won't know what to do when they misbehave. 
You no, know, none of us really know we did the best we can. But it's not personal, as she said. They're not. It's not because of you, and they don't like you. They. It really has nothing to do with you. They just uh, cannot regulate themselves at that moment for some reason. Uh, and when I was talking about the keeping a record, the school stopped behavior services from R once they realized she behaves once a month on the same week every month. Mm -hmm. And we soon realized Mara's got PMS. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's when it was. And so once we were able to put that together, they said, no, she doesn't need a behavior specialist. She needs Tylenol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, we just started working on, she actually takes a mood stabilizer, which I didn't, don't like, but at some point in stage, you kind of get there. And uh, her doctor says on that week of the month, you double it, you give her twice as much that month, that week. So, you know, think, some things it is medical. And you would want to rule out medical before you turned a child away and they could never come anymore. You could tell Mara not to come the third week of the month. <laughs> <laughs> with Allie, I had to figure it out and it took a while, but every day in between the hours of 2 to about 3.30, Allie just would come with it very, very tired, etc. So when you pick her up from school and I would be, what was your game? What you did? <laughs> and I was like, okay, wait, I don't, I'm, I'm trying here. So I've learned, just don't talk to her. If she talks, great. And I will talk back. Now on Fridays, and this child cannot tell you the days of the week, she doesn't know what day it is from day to day. But she knows Friday. She knows what Friday is. <laughs> yeah, she knows I Friday. Can attest she knows, yeah, I she knows Friday. Day, it, talking, 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 talking to her is, is big. Every day. I don't care if the next day it's the same as it's always going to be every day. It doesn't matter. I talk to her every evening, then that next morning, on the way to school. She's probably like, just stop. But <laughs> she never says that. But it, it really does help her. And But on Fridays, Oh, she'll get right out of the bed. She's she's all for it. As soon as she gets back in the car, she's talking my head off. And I'm like, oh, I, I don't know how you know. Today is <laughs> But it's every Friday. It's just, it is, it, and she's done this for years. And you're like, yeah. It could be that. It's a di I know in our room, it's a different routine on Fridays. Well, so it could be that it's a, it's a different routine. It's, there's something internal. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I think it's because she knows, and y'all know this word like nobody's business, Nana and Pops. She knows she will get to go to Nana and Pops or she gets to go to go visit her Mimi. Yeah. So, you know, those are, ah, I get away from you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You make me do stuff that I don't want to <laughs> But it is something internal. It's like a little internal clock that she has. If you don't want big backpacks, there's always little pencil holders, and they can be sensory in themselves, like this one. Um, this one is just because it's so soft. It's just super soft. So, um, it was one of the things that was given to us when we went overseas, and I kept some of them for um, the stars. So, but that's that's one. They've got poppet ones. Yeah, they do. They have poppets pop are on everything right yeah. now. Yeah. But they're like Mari. She wants to make, do the side that makes noise, and then she wants me to pop them all back out for her so mm -hmm. she can pop them again to make noise with yep. them. <laughs> We're done. Please eat snacks and stuff before you look at this. Anything you want to look at and ask questions if you have any questions in private or whatever. Thank you for coming. Thank you.